This afternoon, the funeral for Tyree Nichols is going to be held in Memphis. The celebration of a life for the 29-year-old father of a four-year-old boy who died after a brutal beating by police. Last night, a heartbreaking appeal from his father. Keep fighting for justice for our son and my family. Protect my wife, because she's very fragile right we now. Yeah. We need that for her, trust me. And I need it, too. Tyree Nichols' family and friends, of course, will be joined by Vice President Kamala Harris, civil rights leaders, social justice champions, thousands of local residents and their families, and the families of other young black men and women who have lost their lives due to police violence in cities around the country. Five police officers now facing murder charges. Two other officers and three fire department first responders have been relieved of duty, with more charges in the next coming days possible says the DA. Joining me now, NBC's Priscilla Thompson in Memphis and National Urban League President Mark Morial and civil rights attorney David Henderson also joining us. Priscilla, we're going to see the outpouring of love for Tyree Nichols this afternoon, but first bring us up to date on the latest, all of the latest information on this ongoing investigation. Yeah, Andrea, we saw the hearse pull in here at the church just a little while ago as these uh, this funeral prepares to get underway. But even as this is happening, we're learning new information about this investigation. Overnight, our affiliate here, uh, WMC, confirming that they had received the personnel files on the five officers who have now been fired and charged, and that four of those officers had previous disciplinary action in their file, including two of them, Desmond Mills Jr. and Demi Demetrius Haley, who were both reprimanded for failing to file mandatory reports about use of force after uh, an incident occurred. And as we are learning more about those officers, we're also getting a first look at that initial, uh, an, an unofficial copy of the initial police report that was filed. And that report shows that officers said that Tyree Nichols was fighting them on the day that this incident occurred, that he grabbed for one of their guns at one point. And it also, all it mentions in terms of what the police did to him was that uh, they tased him, they pepper sprayed him, and that one officer hit him in the arm with the baton. So it clearly does not match what we're seeing in the video, raising more questions about the discrepancies between what the police initially said and what actually happened here based on what we are seeing in the video. And I should point out that while we have received an unofficial copy, the district attorney has confirmed that he has a, a similar account in a copy of the report uh, that he has. And we did reach out to the Memphis Police Department on this and they tell us that uh, the official port report is not yet ready uh, to be released. So still so many questions here as this funeral prepares to get underway. We're experiencing a bit of delay. It was supposed to start earlier this morning, but due to uh, the weather that you see uh, around me, a number of people have had their uh, flights delayed and cancellations, uh, including Vice President Harris, who's coming into town uh, to attend and, and stand in solidarity with this family here uh, later on today. Andrea? And David Henderson, uh, do you expect more charges to be filed in the next few days? Because we see the discrepancies between the police reports, the initial police reports, and the video evidence involving uh, in at least one of the other, more actually, of the others, who both the first responders and one of the officers, or one or two of the officers, who have since been, um, let's say, relieved of duty, but not officially fired. So do you expect more action? especially considering how quickly the first five officers were charged. Andrew, we certainly should. And honestly, just with regard to charges, we should see an even bigger indictment here of the way this system has chosen to behave, because what this really reflects is what the true motivations of the Memphis Police Department were from the beginning. You want to give them credit and say what they're trying to do is hold these people accountable for the wrong that they did to Tyree Nichols. But the truth is that part of what they're trying to do is cover up the way that the policing is handled in Memphis. Doctoring reports is part of what these specialized units do. It's part of what they are trained to do. I know because I've had direct contact with some of them before when I was a prosecutor. And if you watch docudramas like We Own This City, they actually have scenes where, based on the book, they discuss this. Officers are trained to write in the report some action that justifies them taking excessive force towards individuals, like, for example, saying they posed a threat to the public. That's really what they say when they suggest that he was recklessly driving. They're saying that he threatened them with lethal force, which is what they're really saying when they suggest that he grabbed for one of their weapons. And what we forget is that they did 
didn't know what the vis visual evidence was going to be after the fact. Body cameras are something that police officers asked for so they could collect information about other people. It just so happens that now they also collect information about police wrongdoing. But what we really have to balance today is honoring Tyree Nichols and our memory of him and his life with recognizing him. And we have to do this to honor him. We have to recognize that his death is part of an ongoing problem with policing as reflected by what we're seeing in Memphis. And Mark Marial, regarding that ongoing problem, Benjamin Crump talk us, talked to us the other day about the fact that there were other incidents, in fact, one uh, with that prompted complaints, other incidents of men who were stopped by this unit and had complained at the way they were treated, one with, with gun drawn, uh, tried to call the, the hotline or the police complaint line uh, four days before Tyree was killed, or attacked, rather, uh, before his death, though. And, Andrew, thanks for and, um, and never got a response. So this is an indication of a systemic failure by the Memphis Police Department and, and the city of Memphis, because uh, they apparently, from beginning to end, this entire ordeal that led to the death at the hands of the police of uh, Tyree Nichols uh, was corrupt. The lack of meaningful probable cause for the initial stop, the way in which he was pulled out of the vehicle in such a violent fashion, the way in which there was a, a chase and then the multiple beatings that took place, and then after that, the way in which they cavalierly ignored him as he lay dying on the ground. It was corrupt. Now, now we are seeing systemic issues. For example, that these officers seem to have had a predisposition, prior incidents, and also a prior habit of not recording their interactions with citizens, which is not only corrupt and a violation of administrative rules, but I think suggests the broader problems with the Memphis Police Department. So while we're going to honor Tyree today, and mourn with his family. This conversation about the system of policing and how it gets responded to and fixed uh, has to elevate in this country. I think the American people are seeing something that many of us have long known. Here's the point. Ten years ago, uh, there would not have been any cameras. Ten years ago, few would have questioned the police officers, if you will, not only erroneous but fraudulent reports, and this entire incident would have been swept under the rug. Now, because of technology, now because of cameras and vigilant citizens, there is an opportunity not only for there to be justice in this tragic incident, but for us to truly have a conversation. The final thing I'll say, the test is going to be in Washington, D.C., whether the Congress of the United States has the courage and the conviction to align itself with what the American people are saying. And that is, now is the time for there to be meaningful police reform in Congress. You've got to do your role. Every local elected official has to do their role. There are no easy answers, but everyone must be a participant in bringing about change. But, Mark, I, I'm an, by nature an optimist, but also uh, a veteran of Washington. <laughs> And if it didn't happen after George Floyd, when the nation was aroused and marching white and black together across the country, what makes one think it's going to happen now with this new house and even more divisions on the Hill? Uh, we have to continue to fight. We have to continue to be optimistic. It took uh, many, many years for the Civil Rights Bill to pass, for the Voting Rights Act to pass. And I think we are going to need the engagement of people. Uh, the protest movement of a peaceful nature, the political activism, and the voices to continue to be loud. We cannot give up. Uh, we cannot allow Tyree Nichols and so many others to just die in vain, and we do nothing, and we not say enough is enough. And I know the political system in D.C. Uh, is what it is, but we are simply not going to give in and not going to give up. So let me call on the Congress. Uh, the president and all of the power there is uh, to prioritize police reform in this nation, to do it on a consistent basis. We do need a bill. 
We do need more than a bill. But Congress should do what it does. And it's easy to be pessimistic. Uh, I am absolutely realistic, but we will not give up. Mark Morial, and that's the spirit with which the families of Breonna Taylor, George Floyd, and others who have died at the hands of police brutality are going to be gathered at that church at 2 o'clock Eastern, according to the, uh, the weather delay, is the new time for this celebration of life of Tyree Nichols. Thank you, Priscilla, for all of your great reporting, and Mark Morial, of course, and David Henderson. Thanks to all. Thank you.